Hey Meadows family and friends, this is Pastor Andrew. I'm uh, sitting in our outside uh, retreat space. Uh, we set up a tent earlier this week and uh, we've all enjoyed it, I think. It's been a uh, nice getaway. So I'm sitting outside just kind of getting away uh, to think about today's attribute of God that we're considering as a fellowship. Today's text that we were reading is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. So it might actually ring very familiar in your ears as uh, we've just spent some time in Ephesians uh, over the last few months. Uh, so hopefully these words sound familiar. Maybe it's been a good reminder of some of the wonderful truth that is found in the book of Ephesians. Well, today we want to look at the decree of God. And uh, this, this is kind of an odd attribute in that um, it's hard to think of a decree as a characteristic uh, or a trait or quality, and yet uh, the decree of God, I think, is, is really important to understand that it does flow out of his essence. And so his decree, along with his other attributes, just kind of line up with who God is, uh, and his desires and plans all flow out of uh, his other attributes, who he is. And so his decree is very essential to who God is and very important for us to consider today. Uh, so just uh, as I was looking through the text, uh, if you're memorizing a verse or two from each passage, I just encourage you to, to maybe start at verse 11, do verse 11 or 12. If you get ambitious, you could do 11 to 14. Um, if you're like a few people that I've talked to, uh, you can memorize the whole chapter and uh, chapter one, chapter two are just so rich with uh, wonderful truth of who God is and what he's done for us in Christ. Uh, as far as the decree of God, uh, John MacArthur, who he's a guy that I don't often quote, uh, but I appreciate uh, just how he summed up some things about the decree of God. He said, there's eight essential things. I just wanna give those to you uh, and hopefully they'll be helpful to you as they have been for me. First off, um, he just reminds us that the decree of God is singular. So when you think about God in his simplicity, that he is singular, that he is unified, that he is simple, that he's not made up of any parts, that is true of his decree as well, that it's a singular decree. And so in verse 11 of uh, Ephesians 1, we hear this phrase, the counsel of his will, which is this singular declaration of all that God intends to bring about in our world, uh, by his desire, his will. Uh, secondly, it's comprehensive. So again, in that verse in Ephesians chapter 1, we get the phrase, works all things. And so it, it just includes everything that you can think of. God's decree is all-encompassing. It's comprehensive. There's nothing that's left out of his decree. Uh, third thing, it's unconditional. It's not based on uh, any outside influences. And so again, in Ephesians 1, uh, we get according to the counsel of his will. God doesn't ask for anybody else's opinion about he wants what, what he wants to do. It's his will and his alone. And so it's unconditional. It's not based on any outside influences. Fourth, it's eternal. And so uh, we see again in Ephesians 1, 4, uh, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. So what we, what we learn about God's decree is it, it was set forth before the ages began. It's eternal. It's with him. And so in his eternity, his decree is also eternal. So not only is it before the ages began, but it will extend past the end of time and we can take comfort in that it's effectual uh, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will accomplish all my purposes that's isaiah 46 10. Uh, it, it, it's just effectual in all that it does so everything that god desires to have happen Everything that he has decreed to happen is going to happen. And, and that really is mind-boggling to us. We can't make decrees like that. We can't guarantee that kind of effect in our world from our will. But God can, 
because he's God. And so his decree is effectual. His decree is immutable. That means it, it doesn't change and nobody can change it. And, and we see that in Job, especially in, in chapter 23. We can also see that in several Psalms uh, where this desire of God, the will of God, the plan of God, nobody can thwart, not even Satan. Now, as part of God's decree, we also have to acknowledge that in that decree, there's this ordaining of sin and controlling its effects. So sin didn't take God off guard. Sin didn't thwart his plan. Sin was not a surprise to God. And again, this is hard to understand, but God allowed sin to enter the world. And he's working through that. He's controlling the effects of that. He's controlling the outcome of that. He's controlling the extent of that. And he's using all things together for his purposes, especially for those that are called according to his purpose and that love him. And so we can trust that even in our sinful, broken world, even as we struggle with sin ourselves at times, we can know that even those things are not thwarting or changing God's eternal decree. And then the purpose of the decree is to manifest or bring praise to God's glory. So as his decree comes to be, it's all intended to bring about praise to God. So I hope that today, as you face the various things that you will face today, that you'll take comfort in the decree of God. And that as you do, as you think about, as you ponder this decree, this eternal plan, the purpose of his will, the counsel of God put in motion, his attributes taking action, I hope that that will lead you to praise and worship our great God. Have a great day.